What's up everybody? Evan here at Evan's Detailing and Polishing. Why am I standing outside in the freezing cold? For science, of course, and for you guys. Just had this question the other week. Everybody keeps asking what the difference is in polishing in the cold. And as you can see, if you look around me here, there's snow on the ground. I'm gonna try not to bust my ass here on this ice, but there's ice out here. It is freezing, freezing cold out here. I'm literally gonna polish out the freezing cold just for you. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and grab the temperature here. I should have been a little bit better prepared. But this wheel here has been sitting outside for about two hours. Whew. Freezing. As you can see, can you ski that in there? It is officially 18 degrees. Feels like seven. It's freezing cold. And I'm gonna polish outside in this. You guys triple dog dare me to lick this? See if my tongue freezes to it? Yeah, fuck it, let's give it a try. You ready? <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. Only an idiot would do that. But, all right, so let's grab the buffers, bring them outside here. As you can see, I left the compound outside as well. Um, I wanted to show you guys what it looks like even when it's traffic. Even when the compound is frozen, uh, it's not gonna perform as well. It's definitely gonna take longer. It's not gonna react right. It's gonna be harder to get this frozen right now. It's literally hard as a rock. I'm really not looking forward to using this because it's gonna suck. But you guys wanted to know, here we go.
sure I got frostbite here. But uh, all right, so what we're seeing here, get this out of the way. I don't know if you can see that. See that black line right there? That's compound freezing. Freezing, freezing compound out here. The green does not like to work in cold. Let me continue here, see if I can get her done. better now that I'm pretty sure I have frostbite in my fingers um, it was chilly out there definitely really cold out there um, just looking at it here um, I'll try to get some close-ups to kind of show you what I'm seeing um, but definitely the compound froze the coloring compound did for sure the cut compound didn't really want to work all that great either just because it was so cold the bars were not melting properly now I've rolled this inside. I'm gonna let this wheel sit inside for about an hour and let it warm up. Once it gets a little bit of warmth into it, I'm gonna cut the next three holes and just kind of show you what it does. Uh, if I were just to cut this right now after rolling it in from outside, all it's really gonna do is just sit and sweat. Uh, going from being cold to being uh, warm, I keep it 65, 70 in my shop sometimes because that's where I like to polish at. I like to polish without a hoodie. Um, 65 is about the perfect temperature to cut. Um, so when I tell people that I test products, this is what I do. I'll test products outside in the cold. As you guys have seen in previous videos, I have polishing rooms where my wheel machines are. Um, I have humidifiers, I have dehumidifiers. Um, I physically lift the temperature in there, heat it up, cool it down, add humidity, reduce humidity. Uh, we do a full round of testing. When, when we test products, we don't mess around. Um, we take it very seriously. We wanna make sure that if we're gonna tell somebody that it's something, we wanna make sure that it is that way. Uh, and we wanna make sure that when somebody asks us a question from Louisiana where it's really super humid and warm all the time, we wanna be able to tell them, or if somebody hits us up from the desert where it's really dry and hot, I wanna be able to give them good answers. So, like I said, I'm gonna let this warm up for about an hour. Um, this wheel is one of my display wheels that I leave up on my advertising sign out by the highway. Uh, it hasn't been polished in two and a half years, um, but it's definitely sat out by my sign and uh, collected road salts and snow um, time after time. So give me about an hour, I'll get this wheel warmed up and uh, we'll cut three more sections and then I'll show you the difference. Deuces. All right, so now we're inside, wheel's warm-ish. It's been about an hour. Still got a little bit of chill to it, but the air in here is warm. The wheel's relatively warm. We're gonna go back and cut it the same exact way. Orange with brown, yellow with green. Same as we always do our two-step process. What you're gonna see is how much faster this cuts being warm. And then at the end of this, I'm gonna grab the camera handheld and I'm gonna just show you the difference between the two different qualities in with it being cold and the metal not being warm and the metal being warm. It's really a pretty significant difference. When you roll it outside, you don't see it as bad. Um, but here underneath the LEDs, I can sit and really pick it apart. Um, but you will notice it'll make a big difference. It, it'll cut down on product usage being warm. It'll also cut faster. It'll also do a better job, especially if you're going over something sanded. If you're sanding something and it's freezing cold, you're gonna hate it. It's not gonna be fun. Cutting it is absolutely miserable when it's, when it's cold. I'm gonna grab my respirator here, check this wheel out. We cut it real quick, get after it.
literally cut and colored this section in less than half the time that I did when it was outside and it was cold. Now the compounds were inside here and warm as well. Uh, the buffs were warm. Everything was warm. The wheels warm. It cut twice as fast. It used way less than half the compound. As you remember when we were sitting outside, the color stage was literally freezing on the wheel as we were doing it. So I had to keep compounding, compounding, compounding to keep it wet. Um, we polished outside at Louisville um, two years ago during the snowstorm and we had to color um, some decks on a car hauler and that, that material is really thin. I literally watched compound freeze as we were doing it. It was an absolute nightmare, nightmare, nightmare to try and do. Um, but I hope this answers a lot of confusion. Uh, a lot of people have been asking, you know, does temperature make a difference? Temperature is another one of the key factors in metal polishing. Um, so I hope this video helps a lot. I hope that you guys got a lot of information out of it. I'm gonna try and do some handheld here to try and show you the difference. I hope you can see it. Um, I can see a physical difference here in the shop, but whether or not the camera will be able to pick it up is probably gonna be a different story. So I'm gonna try and show you guys, and I'll do that here. All right, so what you see here is definitely some color freezing. It looks really clear, a little hashy from it being freezing in the pad. Um, but yeah, you can definitely see it was harder to cut. You can see some of that white spotting. It didn't want to cut quite as well as it should have. But over here, crystal clear. Went super quick. A little hashy yet because it's fresh. But yeah, it went super fast. Looks really good. So let's just look at it here. You can see the difference in color, huge. The side that was warm is definitely way darker in color. This is lighter in color. <clears throat> you can definitely tell a huge difference. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you guys tuning into my channel. Uh, it's youtube.com forward slash Evan Stager Metal Polishing. Uh, of course, all the products we sell are available on goshenon.com forward slash shop. I appreciate you stopping by. Check out the links below for all the products we use today. And of course, these are all just metal polishing tips. I'll never tell you I'm perfect. I'll never tell you I'm the best, um, but I try my hardest. So I appreciate you guys all watching these. Hopefully uh, you're finding them knowledgeable. And um, if you got any more questions, drop them in the comments below and I'll try to get it answered as soon as possible. Thanks for stopping by and we'll see you again soon.